Hello, I'm going to turn this way. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, I hope that we get some people tonight. Uh, if not, this will be on the YouTubes hopefully forever. I have no idea how good the signal is because I'm literally in the middle of the rainforest. Not that you can really tell because it's dark, but as there is forest behind me and I am in front of a really big bright light which apparently is at the end of the reach of the Wi-Fi. So hopefully, um, I'm doing this from my phone, so hopefully someone can tell me if, uh, <laughs> how the quality is. Um, I have, I have never gone live on YouTube before, so this is new for me. So if I miss your comment, I'm sorry, but you should definitely comment and let me know if you're here. Hi, Frank man, nice. Hi, <laughs> if you want to let me know how the quality is, I'm literally at the end of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I thought tonight, um, I am in the cloud forest right now because I was called in to be a fairy, hence the makeup, which, and the costume has been taken off, but I was a fairy and then I had to do a night walk. So, you know, we ran to do that. So I'm sorry, we're a few minutes late, but I wanted to show you the black light and what we're getting so far and like talk to you about some of the things that are here on the sheet behind me so as you can tell it's very bright <laughs> and so there's stuff and we are going to talk about the stuff looks good looks very good oh good excellent excellent that is yes that is okay because like literally i'm in the middle of the rainforest so we can only do so much sometimes from the middle of the rainforest so i'm gonna flip this around and I'm going to try and show you some of the critters. I'm going to try and stand on this side as much as possible because like this is where the Wi-Fi is coming from. And yeah, so we're going to flip. Okay, as you can tell, we have some things. This is a specialized light. It is hooked up to a box and to another box. Um, but this light is not only really bright, as you can tell, it's like lighting up all out into the forest. So this light is really bright, but it also emits all wavelengths, including UV. So it's good for attracting various different kinds of insects. Um, here, I'm at El Septimo Paraiso in Mindo, Ecuador. By the way, I feel like I should mention that. Um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna, okay. So here is a Rothschildia moth and we're gonna like as you can see if i put my hand next to it it's a little it's a little bit big i might actually be able to pick it up i don't know it's kind of sleepy we're gonna see come on friend Grr. nope hold on <laughs> so look at some of the other pretty things Ugh. so we're gonna try and pick up the moth there we go there we go all right we're gonna flip we're gonna flip it around again so you can see all right here we are Take the shoe. All right, this is hard to like handle a selfie stick and a moth all at the same time. But, okay, so this is a Rothschildia moth. It's a, <laughs> if you couldn't tell, this is a this is in the family Saturniidae, and this this moth uh, will only live for about a week because it doesn't have a mouth, and so it actually can't eat anything. And this is a male. He's actually pretty small. So for this genus and species. He's a little bit small. That's how one of the ways I can tell he's a male. And also he has really fluffy antennae. And so that's one of the other ways that I can tell that he is a male. Yeah. See if you can see those antennae. We're on the we're on the selfie stick side. So here we are, those antennae. Um, if you guys have any questions about any of these animals, feel free to ask them. I'm here until my arm can no longer hold a selfie stick or my battery dies. This Rochelia moth, as you can see, has these transparent panes in its wings. It has these transparent chains. Hi, Nightmare. Thanks for, thanks for being here. I hope you like insects. <laughs> um, yeah, so these transparent panes is actually one of the ways that you can differentiate different species. I'm not as good with knowing the different species of this particular genus. Again, it's Rothschildia, but you, but the like the size and the shape of the, of these transparent panes is how you tell. And these transparent panes that are here are just areas where there's no scales, but that's just how the moth grows. It exists. Doesn't have a mouth, so it will only live for one week before it, it perishes. Um, this, 
The adult form is only to reproduce and nothing else. So very, very pretty charismatic, big moth. Right now we're in the middle of the rainy season on this side of the Andes. We're on the western side of the Andes in the cloud forest at about 4,000 feet or 1,400 meters, something like that. Or 1,200 meters, something like that. Hey, Joe! Joe29, hello, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And so, yeah, these are really common during the rainy season on this side. <laughs> Lol, it's only goal in life is to make babies sound fun but sad at the same time. Yeah, like not even any time for eating, just just time for making babies. Hey, Ma <laughs> hey MJ, how are you? Ah, nice. Hello. Look at the look at the big moth. It is so pretty. Thanks for being here. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna put out my shopping shirt a little bit further. Oh, it has now flown away. It is now back onto the sheet. All right, so we're gonna flip the, flip around again, and we're gonna take a. That is a very very big moth. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. It is not small as as we would like to say in the, um, yeah, in in, in the industry. I'm gonna try and find it's like balance between finding things that are cool and also big enough that if my quality goes down, you can still see it. All right. So here is a pretty cicada. Oh, and it flew. All right, never mind. <laughs> this out here. I'm not sure you're not gonna be able to see it very well. I'm gonna... Literally went out my sleeve. Come back. It has now also flown away. Um, all the things. Uh, so here's that big Rochelia here, down here. Hopefully the quality is gonna be okay. We're gonna... This is a big hawk moth. Oof. Oops. For some reason they don't like being picked up. Come on. You okay? Yeah. Here we go. So we're gonna turn the turn the camera around again. All right. So here's a hawk moth. We're gonna turn the light here. It's like where the light and where the Wi-Fi are are not the same, not in the same spot. Okay, so this is a hawk moth. And these are really, really important for the polliniz polliniz pollination here. I've been speaking Spanish all day, so now the Spanish is stuck in my head. So here is a hawk moth. And these guys have really long tongues. Some of them can have tongues that are two to three times their body length. And they pollinate very specific flowers here that also have kind of like... The, that part of the flower is called the corolla. Um, and so they have really long tongues to be able to fit into those flowers. And they're really important nocturnal pollinators. It has flown away. Come on, friend. Oh, it's on a leaf. I can just pick up the leaf. Convenient. So uh, it's vibrating its wings. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on the, on the, on the screen. But it's vibrating its wings, and that happens a lot just because... Um, and that happens just because it's cold right now. And so when they get scared and want to fly away, they don't, their wing muscles aren't kind of like awake enough yet to do that. So they will sit and they will vibrate their wings to get enough oomph to be able to fly. So very pretty hawk moth. He has pretty wings that are like underneath. His hind wings are black and yellow and they're very pretty. So yeah, here we are. Here's a, a big hawk moth. Again, sorry for the late start, everybody. I was in the middle of a guided walk, and there's a lot to see tonight. We even saw we even saw a snake. It was awesome. All right, we're gonna pick up another moth. Now I'll turn the camera around. Hold on, turn the camera around. This is all right. Oh, excuse me while I struggle. All right, here we are. Here is a flannel moth, and it is red with these with these dark spots on it. Let me see if I can get him in focus a little bit better. Moth vibrate to get some oomph. Yes, that is the that is the technical term. Anyway, so a lot of the moths on here are really brightly colored, and that's because they are um, toxic, not to us, but to birds that would might want to eat them. And here's let me know. I'm like escaping Wi-Fi. So let me know how the quality is. But um, and I also have a flashlight in my other pocket. My other pocket. Ha. All right. So here we are. Uh, yeah. So here is a big geometrid moth. 
no, um, a big Noctuid moth, sorry. And it has these really cool camouflage patterns. Uh, I'll put my hand next to it. Mm -mm. Oh, pretty large. Pretty large. I don't get it, um, because it's just kind of one of, like, the gen generic brown ones. If it's, if it's not giant and colorful, no one seems to care about it. Oh, we have another of those big Rochilia moths that I just went into the bathroom. <laughs> Literally went, went right under. Okay, so here, let me know how the quality is, guys. Again, we're at the end of the Wi-Fi. This is a really beautiful, also, tiger moth. You'll see a lot of these tiger moths have these bright colors, and that's because they're toxic. And again, they're not toxic to us, they're toxic to birds, but they have the, usually alkaloids, which are a lot of different poisons. I'm like, uh, alkaloids, if I remember correctly. Um, and so a lot of them also have these really bright colors, are like, have these toxins in their blood. Well, we have, we have another one of those big moths, it is flying around. <laughs> so these large moths, um, like, they really like to come out the later in the night, the better it is for them. All right, I'm going to try and grab grab something else I can show you guys. Is, um, all right. Yeah. I don't want to step on anything because there's a lot of stuff that's, like, kind of right by the light as well. Let's see. We're going we're gonna to face the phone this way. So, you're going to have a lot. You can see a lot of these moths are just, like, these really pretty kind of camouflage colors. Um, this thing is also is another type of, this is actually a geometrid moth. Again, it doesn't have a name. I call it the leopard moth, but no one cares what I call it. And they're in season right now. You can see them all over I'm being hit by giant moths. And let's see. Here's, here's a really pretty cicada. <laughs> Moth. Here's a really pretty cicada. You can see all those patterns on it. Again, let me know how the quality is. Um, this thing that just... Oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone! <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, if you guys have any questions about them, I'm happy to answer any of them. Um, es these... Estos... Here, these are another type of tiger moth, but the wings are clear. They're actually wasp mimics. So they're not wasps themselves, they're just mimics. Here's that, here's that hawk moth. It's finally like sat still enough to be able to look at it. I'm gonna try and lift up one of its wings. Nope, it's not having it. I need, I need like a, on my selfie stick, a mount <laughs> for my flashlight. <laughs> Yeah, so here's another Rochilia. So now there's two on the sheet. There are two. There's one down there, and there's one up here. This is a really cool um, plant hopper, but it literally walked up the sheet and then went around to the other side. What lights am I using? This is a mercury vapor light bulb. Um, so it's a mercury vapor light bulb, and I had a friend uh, do the electricity. So it's connected to this transformer here. I don't do electricity, so I don't really understand how it works, but the light is connected into this big thing, and this big thing is connected into the transformer, and the transformer is connected into the very long extension cord that is going into the jungle. <laughs> Down there somewhere where there's electricity. So, yes, as you can tell, there is. And so every now and then you get moths on the underside here as well. Colonel. I'd say, yes, they are mainly diurnal. Sometimes you can get them to the lights because they'll come and they'll just hang out at the light and eat all the insects that are here. But uh, you find more mantises in the dry season. So right now we're in the, in the rainy season here. And in my experience, you tend to find them at the transition between the rainy season and the dry season, which is about April or May, or you find them like the big mantises, you tend to find in the middle of like July, so the, so the dry season. There's a lizard hanging up here earlier, but he has eaten his fill and, and left. Again, everyone, we are in in the jungle. <laughs> Flop. You go. In the jungle. Um, let's see. We're gonna... Oh, this one, this one's in great condition right up here. That one, he's so beautiful. He's in really great condition. Oh, I'm faced by this big moth. <laughs> and the 
as he does. Uh, I need a helper. Does someone want to come and help me manage all of the different things? So here's the cicada, and he is he has wings open. This is really interesting because a lot of, normally cicadas don't sit with their wings open, but this little species really likes to, and it just how it likes to sit. Here is a parasitic wasp. I'm studying soft-body beetles. Are you nervous about being in, out at night in the jungle? Um, I will. I will flip the camera around and like talk about. No, I'm not afraid to be out at night in the jungle. It's actually my favorite time to be out in the jungle. Actually, is at night. I think it's just such a peaceful time, and you can probably hear the things chirping in the background. <laughs> um, and it's when the jungle comes alive to me personally. I find that. Like during the day, especially in the afternoon when it's raining, like literally everything is asleep. It's too early for the frogs, it's too wet for the birds, and it's too cold for the insects in the middle of the rain. And so I find at night, it's just really when the jungle comes alive to me. And I also grew up on a one lane dirt road in the middle of Connecticut, in the middle of the woods, with a cemetery across the street. So I feel like any any trauma i would have had from you know being alone in the woods at night uh, was scared out of me when i was a small child so that's that question and then um uh Candon lou says what do you use the light trap for besides attracting moths uh that's basically what it's for is to attract moths um Sometimes you get some beetles. There was a beetle walking around. There was a sulfid or a carrion beetle, and it has since vacated the property. I'll turn the camera back around because I'm sure you think the bugs are way more interesting than my than my face. Flip it around. Nope. Okay. Um, yeah. So mainly this actually. I use mine for tourism because you know a lot of these different moths. For example, like a lot of these, you know, really intricately camouflaged ones. So let me pull up my flashlight again because it's sitting in the middle of the... So like this one, it's like super camouflaged, right? And so you would never, ever, ever see that. Hi, Teal. So you would like never see that if you were just walking in the jungle by yourself. And that's what I really like about the light is that you can really see all this diversity. You can see all these really tiny little things that you normally wouldn't be able to see or like wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even think to look for on like the side of a tree or whatever. So that's what I use the light for. Um, some other people use the light to actually just do studies like biodiversity studies, but it's mainly to attract insects and of that mainly moths. Let's see. And was there anything that I was hoping to find tonight? Says William Tan. I was actually hoping to find one of these big guys. So if you're just new here, oh, uh, it's a like the flashlight is in my mouth. I didn't tell it's big, but um, this rainy season is really really great for these big moths. So I'm really excited that we found that one, and I'm really excited that we have found this hawk moth. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so I'm really excited that we've seen those two. There are some other, like, I've seen some other right now big moths, but it was raining all day today. So I think they are just hiding in, in their hidey hole. Let's see. Do you have a favorite one that's shown up so far? Yeah, these Rothschildia are definitely some of my favorites. They're so charismatic. People are like, oh, I don't like moths. A lot of Ecuadorians I found, not so much people from the States, people are kind of like, oh, moths are boring and brown. But in Ecuador, I found that there's like this big myth where people think that mo all moths eat your clothes, which with 180,000 species of moths is obviously not true. And so when people come here and they're like, oh, it's a butterfly. I'm like, no, actually it's a moth. It's really cool. And they're like, wow, it's so beautiful. But then I say that it only lives for a week. It doesn't have a mouth. These big ones doesn't have a mouth. Um, it really just like reproduces and that's it. And, you know, it's, it's really always interesting to watch people go from like moths are gross and eat my clothes to like, oh, I'm sad that this giant beautiful creature only lives for a week. So that's, that's what I really... I don't know. That's that's what I like. This, these are definitely one of my favorites, and I really like talking about the hawk moths as well. I mean, this one's like see, the problem is I can't like hold the flashlight, and I'm gonna like brace my phone against us, this. I'm gonna try and open its wing for you. 
So yeah, I'm not sure if you see the flash of yellow and black under there. Um, but these guys are really important pollinators. And people don't realize that moths are important pollinators. And there's just so many of them. So I like that part as well, because a lot of people are like, oh, butterflies, you know, like pollinators, blah, blah, blah. But butterflies aren't super great pollinators. Their feet aren't particularly sticky. There's some that are fine. Um, like the heliconius butterflies, the pollen sticks in their mouth. But a lot of them just like drink nectar and the pollen doesn't stick and their legs are too long to do effective pollinization. Pollin pollination. But those hawk moths are specifically in um, relationships with specific flowers to, it's this guy right here, um, to, to be able to pollinate them. So they're really cool to talk about. Let's see, we have, do you have a macro cam lens for the little ones? I uh, know this, I mean, YouTube doesn't allow me to zoom in much further, but I have a Note 9 and my phone is actually really good. I can get pictures of little tiny things like millimeters long without too much of a problem, actually. So if you're looking for a phone with a good camera, I really like the Notes. I know a lot of people talk about the iPhone, but the thing that I like about Androids is that I, um, the ability built into the phone camera so you can just like auto focus or manually focus and tell it you know what you want it to what you want it to do do people collect and pin there like some do in canada um says lincoln no it's actually illegal so i'm gonna flip the camera around we're gonna talk a little bit maybe i'll try and pick up this moth again let's see we're gonna flip the camera around yeah so um no you actually can't uh, collect anything here so here in Ecuador, I'm just gonna like hold this guy up for you. <laughs> so here in Ecuador, um, nature has the right to exist and persist and reproduce and have its vital functions, I think is how the constitution is worded. But in the constitution, nature, in the Ecuadorian constitution, Ecuador, um, nature has the right to exist and can be defended in court with a lawyer as if it was a person and can't kill anything you can't kill anything you can't bring things you know if i if i want to bring this moth to quito i couldn't do that if i wanted to bring this moth to the to the coast i couldn't do that um and it's because nature has the right to exist which is really i think interesting when we talk about conservation because a lot of people do want to collect and a lot of people do want to pin and they're like oh but i could go to peru and just like pin stuff and I'm like well yeah that's also how you get like monkeys in the illegal pet trade you know so I actually really like that about Ecuador that you can't pin um it makes me feel better in general like there's so many like this reserve well my phone is big and heavy <laughs> like this reserve is a private reserve and so when you have a private reserve you can't like it's here for conservation it's here for to like protect these animals and insects are animals and it's here to protect the plants like we have a huge problem with people stealing orchids ecuador has one of the biggest biodiversities for orchids Four thousand orchid species are found in ecuador out of the ten thousand worldwide so we have problems with people stealing orchids out of here and selling them on the black market just like you would animals insects or whatever so i don't know i feel like i like i do the like these personalized tours right but if you are if you're interested in collecting like ecuador is not the place for you and my tours are not the place for you because like again i'm here to help protect and preserve and conserve these animals they're much prettier here in the jungle i promise than they are collected so what about animals that have passed so also they feel, yeah even if the animal is dead um you can't even if the animal's dead or you have pieces of the animal that's dead, uh, like wings and stuff, all of it is you can't bring it out of the country and you're not even supposed to move it across provinces. If you watch my YouTube videos, you'll see that I have insects in boxes behind me. Um, those were illegally collected, but not by me. They were illegally collected. And then the person who illegally collected them left and was going to throw them all out. And I was like, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> I will take them from you so that way I can talk about them and stuff. But well flash of silver yeah it's it's so cool it's because these are transparent you can see my hand behind them but when it hits the light just right they're they're shiny and it's just because there's no scales thanks i was just wondering says lincoln i figured nature reserves were off limits same as most places yeah so nature reserves everywhere everywhere's off limits doesn't matter if you catch it on the side of the road and you're not in a reserve doesn't matter 
Um, some places are more strict about it than others, but technically all of it's illegal. If you're caught in the airport, it's a $20,000 fine and three to five years in jail. And I don't know about you. I mean, I think I'm too pretty for Ecuadorian jail, but yeah, that's my, oh, it flew. Goodbye. It warmed up. <laughs> um, thanks just wondering, just make sure. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys have any other questions, I am here. I'm here to answer them. I love your makeup, by the way. Ah, oh, thank you. I was a fairy earlier. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to check my Instagram, um, I'm actually here in the cloud forest because uh, one of my jobs is to be a little, is to be a fairy and to set up the light and then talk about these insects. We have a, a program going on right now where people come, they're socially distanced up here in the garden outside the table we all wear masks like you can see mine's here that's why my face is black right here because my mask rubbed off on it and yeah i like you have your wine and your brownie and your cake and your coffee or whatever and then me the fairy walks around and brings you bugs so you get all the enjoyment of the rainforest with none of the work which is actually a pretty legit story <laughs> legit legit strategy Having being an insect fairy sounds like an awesome job. Yeah, I mean it's pretty freaking great. I'm not gonna lie. I get to, I live in Quito normally. I get to come down. I get to spend time in the cloud forest. I get to tell adults and kids about the things I love, bugs in one of my favorite ecosystems in the whole world. Uh, and I love costuming. I used to do cosplay when I lived in the States. It's not like really, there's like no cosplay scene in Ecuador. Um, so it's been really fun to kind of be able to do the, the, like the dressing up and the costuming, but also combine it with animation. And yeah, I, it's really, really interesting right now because of the pandemic. A lot of nationals who would be going to the Galapagos or who would be traveling to the States are now kind of coming to places like this. You know, we are only an hour and a half, two hours from Quito, the capital, which is at eight to 10,000 feet above sea level. It's mountains, it's dry, and you come down an hour down the mountain and it looks like this. And I think a lot of people just don't, especially if you live in Quito, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna like go an hour away from my house for like vacation. But now with the pandemic, like they are. And when they come here, they're like, wow, I didn't know this was here. I didn't realize this forest was so beautiful. I didn't realize that bugs this big or this many of them lived here. And it's been a really amazing experience kind of sharing it and stuff. I'm mm, watching from Winnipeg right now. Very, very <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is about the time of the year where all my friends are like, oh, snow. And I'm like, Mm hmm yeah you enjoy that snow i'm just gonna be here with my bug friends and uh yeah you enjoy you enjoy all that snow what are, let's see we have oh yeah here well, i'm gonna shine my flashlight as soon as i find which pocket i have four pockets so naturally my flashlight is always in the last pocket i look i look at um boy. Seeing people discover wildlife and fall in love with it is truly, yeah, it really is the best thing ever. Um, I feel so lucky to be able to be part of this, and there really aren't many entomologists in Ecuador. I can, like, count the number of entomologists in Ecuador on, like, one hand. Yeah, so here we are. You can see this is a, the bright red one is a flannel moth. A lot of people think it looks like a, uh, like a, a mariquita, <laughs> a ladybug. <laughs> Excuse me, my brain is half in Spanish and half in English right now. But a lot of people think that it looks like a, a ladybug. And that's because, you know, red and black tells predators that they're dangerous. And so both this flannel moth and the, um, like, and the, um, and the ladybugs are saying the same thing. These guys have different kinds of alkaloids in their blood that makes them poisonous. Oh, yeah. What draws insects to the white sheet rather than buzz? then buzz the light so so you can see probably a couple that are circling the light and they are attracted to the light primarily because they think it's the so yeah they they are they think it's the moon and they end up circling the light in a fibonacci sequence because they keep the light at one side of their body at a specific angle to their eyes and if you're navigating around the moon that is a great strategy because <laughs> It means you go in a straight line. However, when there's a big bright light bulb and you do that, you end up circling it. So eventually when they come in, it gets really, it's bright. It's super bright. This is like a stadium light. You guys can't tell how bright it is, but yeah, it's not good to look at because it 
it definitely is not good for your eyes. Anyway, <laughs> so when the bugs come in, it's like daylight to them. It's so bright. It's emitting UV. And so they hit the sheet and they go to sleep. That's just why like a lot of them are really calm, which is why I can pick them up. Or if I try and pick them up, they just kind of like haphazardly flop to the ground because they're like, dude, bro, it's time to go to sleep. What are you doing? So I think... No, these are both males. This one's also a male. Ac Ad this is Beetle just... Where'd he go? <laughs> Beetle just land on my face. <laughs> Good times had by all. Good times had by all. Um, what's your academic background and how did you end up in Ecuador? I have a master's in biology in Costa Rica and I'm missing the tropics big time. Yeah, I'll turn a... I feel like personal questions I should flip this way. Is there a way? I don't think there's a way I can have both the sheet and my face. Oh, there we go. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Um, how did I end up in Ecuador? So I have my master's in entomology. I got it from the University of Georgia. And when I was at the University of Georgia, we had a term abroad with students. And it came to Ecuador. It was three. And basically, my before she became my advisor, she was like, hey, one of your students said that you're good at teaching. Do you want to get paid to teach students about bugs in the jungle? And I was like, is, is this a trick question? Because I'm just going to sign the paperwork right now, if you wouldn't mind. So uh, I redesigned the curriculum after that first year. So then they had to take me back until I graduated. And after I graduated, I realized that academia was just not really the place for me. I mean, obviously, I dressed up as a fairy and talked about bugs in the jungle. I don't know why I thought academia was like the correct place for me. But I quickly learned that it was not the correct place for me and decided not to go for a PhD. But that was kind of devastating, actually, because I thought like I wanted to be a professor. Like, that's what I thought I wanted to do. And all of a sudden, that wasn't going to be a reality anymore. So... Because I had, we had come to Ecuador, we had stayed at one of the same eco lodges. I literally messaged them, was like, You want an entomologist for quote unquote a while? And they were like, Yeah, sure. So I came down and, and it was supposed to be six months. It ended up being two years. And then I decided, like, I really like this. I really like touring. I really like showing people the biodiversity here. Uh, I really, like, I fell in love with Ecuador and, you know, all the conservation projects that are here. Like, you know, this patch of forest is a private reserve. Like, this exists and isn't chopped up wood because someone bought it and was like, no, we can make this a thing. So that those stories just, like, were really inspiring. And I know so many people are interested in seeing the jungle, but, like, you know, people speak Spanish here. So that's a little bit difficult. And just traveling around in a foreign country, we don't speak the language is hard and you don't know where to go and all those things. And I was like, I can be that mediator. Like, I can be that person to make you, like, to have you come down and see the bugs. I know the cool people and, like, the cool projects that are here. And so I just kind of stayed. And that's how that worked out, I guess. <laughs> Uh, what insect got you, what for insect first got you into entomology? I first found a Meloria day and fell in love with them. I actually don't know that family. So if you want to give me the common name for that family. Um, I remember when I was really young, I picked up a stag beetle. I thought it was a good idea. I mean, I, like one of the stag beetles will like a really big mandibles on the front and I was like yeah I'll pick this up this is a good idea and obviously it bit me and it hurt but I remember just being so surprised that it smelled bad like it smelled horrible and I couldn't wash the stench off I tried everything I tried like dish soap hand soap shampoo conditioner like laundry soap nothing my hand just smelled gross for like two days to me, that was just so, so fascinating, and I'm nearsighted, actually, so it's very hard for me to see birds and other things, and I just found myself being so interested in insects and was surprised that a lot of other people didn't feel similarly. I was like, these animals are so beautiful. I mean, like, look at it. Like, they're so, so beautiful. How can you not love them? And the more I started asking questions about insects, the more I realized we just don't know a, like a lot of insects we don't even know what they eat if you look them up like beetles in the united states like not even you know here in ecuador but in the states it's like oh we think it eats sap we don't really know 
And to me, that's just crazy. Imagine going to a zoo and there's like an elephant and you're like, what does it eat? And they're like, mm, we don't know. And to, to me, that's like, there's just common, beautiful, big ant bugs, right? And we just don't know that basic biology is kind of really got, got me hooked on it. And the family, oh, the flower beetles. Oh, yeah. I have a moth in my ear. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the flower beetles. Nice. Yes. Pretty. They have soft bodies and really weird antennae. Insects with weird antennae. I love insects with weird antennae. They are amazing. We had this, like, really cool um, plant hopper. It was, like, literally... I think it, like, jumped into the bathroom, I swear. And the bathroom is behind the sheet. <laughs> um, yes, I love insects with crazy weird antennae. That's awesome. Amazing. Beetles are great. Basically, a stinky insect that hurt you got you into this. Yep, basically. I fell face first into a swamp trying to catch a dragonfly, and that was also, like, the best day. And the more you learn about them, the more fascinating they are. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, yeah, and I didn't know that you could be an entomologist. It wasn't until I did a term abroad in Australia where I met an entomologist. And they're like, I'm an entomologist, and I bring bugs around to do e outreach and, like, you know, show people that bugs. And I was like, what? That's a thing that you can do? Like, sign me up. And after that term abroad is when I signed up to be, to be an entomologist. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, let's see, what else is, is this, the, there's so many of these moths, you can tell it's like their season, right, so it's so crazy, because when I first moved to the jungle, I didn't think really about seasonality, I was like, yes, there's the rainy season and the dry season, but pretty much, like, what, they're all just, like, it's the jungle, it's warm all the time, so just finding things that have seasonality, like, it'll be like this for, like, two weeks, so you'll just get this same moth, a ton of them, to the sheet. And then they're, you know, they're all gone for the next season. So it's really interesting. The same thing with these Rothschildia that are now here. The week. They're now sitting right next to each other. So, you know, and there's the two of them right there. And the first time I saw these, like, blew my mind. You know, you read about these bugs that are like, oh, yeah, it's like the size of a dinner plate or, like, bigger than your hand. And you're like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. But then when you actually see them in real life, when you actually see them like that for the first time, I mean, it's absolutely crazy. I don't know if my signal is going to be good enough for this, but... And also my, but I call this little yellow moth the Batman moth because it looks like it has the bat signal on it, right? Tell me that that doesn't have the bat signal on it. Yes, our ants attracted to the light during the natural flights. Yes, we just, we had one. It was flying around the light, uh, but I don't, it's not here anymore. But yes, you do get them. They are attracted to the light during the nuptial flights. And actually it's really interesting because the leaf cutter ants, You'll just find the new princesses, like, on the ground. And uh, people in Colombia eat them. But it's really cool because sometimes you can find them and they have the fungus on their back. Because they're, you know, they're going to bring the fungus that they're going to cultivate into the new nest. So every now and then you can find, you know, new princesses, I guess, have made or whatever and are carrying the fungus and to look for a new home is really, really neat. Um... Right, I'm so excited to. Oops, hold on. I'm so excited to do more beetles. Some are toxic, and we have no idea why or how. I just want to know. I keep by your sheet if I can see any. We had a sylphid here. I'm gonna like flip the sheet again. We had a sylphid. I don't know. Um, and we had a big scarab that kept hitting me in the head. That I guess he was tired of hitting me in the head and and left. <laughs> but we did have a sylphid. I'm so uh, I'm so bummed that he's not here for you right now. Uh, yeah, but if you are interested in, oops, if you are interested in chemical ecology, the Secret Weapons by Thomas Eisner. I recommended this book. Actually, actually, that video is coming out tomorrow. I delayed it from today till tomorrow, so that video is coming out tomorrow, and it has a ton of information about beetles specifically in there. So, if you're interested in the chemical ecology of beetles and like some of what we know about it, I highly recommend that book by Thomas Eisner. It is called Secret Weapons. I'm doing a whole video, like tomorrow, a video coming out at 11 a.m. And I review that book specifically so you can kind of like see inside of it and stuff. Um, picture quality is consistently great. That's amazing. That's crazy. Uh, amazing how different insects come to a light at different times of night. Yes. And so like these, these big moths, they weren't here earlier. Oh, whoops, you guys can't see. You can just see my face. <laughs> so yeah, these Rothschildia moths, they weren't here earlier. Um, I set this light up at like six and I was here doing the fairy stuff at eight, eight to nine. And these guys weren't here yet. 
And at like nine o'clock, this is when that, that hawk moth, which is this guy right here in the middle of the light, he had just shown up. So, so yeah. And also it depends on what the weather is doing. So if it's like raining a lot, you won't get some or you'll get some others. And yeah, just like the, just the night is really interesting. If you want these big giant Saturnian moths, the best time for them is usually between like one in the morning and like five. It's usually the best time for them. Is princess an actual title for ants bees? I know there's drones, queens, and a lace and stuff like that. Yeah, it's I'm trying to think. It's probably like you probably aren't gonna find that term in like a fancy textbook, but it's you it's definitely a term that's used among entomologists and people will know what you're talking about. Um, because the a lace just mean the wings ones, and those can be males or females. Drones are the males and then the, the females would be princesses the new queens and not all of them are going to be queens right because they have to mate and then they have to find a spot for their nest and write down the whole the whole line so i don't think it's like a technical technical term but a lot of entomologists use princess. thank you so much last for christmas yeah it's a great book it's so good um, there has been more, for the Thomas Eisner book, there has been more research done on some of these different systems. It's a little bit, and it's a little bit old at this point. I mean, it's not super old. It's like, I don't come out in like the 2000s. Um, but it's definitely a great stepping stone. So if you read about something, you're like, and it's like, we don't quite know yet. Good chance that you can just look up that species now. And there's usually a paper written by him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I think, oh, hold on. I thought I saw, I thought I saw yeah. Oh, clip the I keep pushing the wrong button. I'm like such a boomer. I can't even do any of this. Uh this is an ichneumonid wasp here. This is a this is a parasitic wasp. Do you plan to do another live stream similar to this? But finding is that I want to do one of those. The problem is where I have signal and where there are bugs is almost never the same. We can try and walk around a little bit through here. I might try and do it through the here at uh, like a slightly different time because right now we're, um, we're at the, like, it's not no, it's not the new moon, but it's pretty close. It's, it's just starting to, to, uh, to grow. <laughs> it, is, it is waxing. The moon is waxing. So it's, it, there is no moonlight right now. It is dark, right? It is dark. So it's really hard to just walk around and find insects right now because they're just like not really out that much. But we can try. We can try it because like this is where the Wi-Fi is. All right, so here we have, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it right now. We're doing it live, literally. This is a Galofa species down here. Um, again, this is going to be, I need a, someone give me a selfie stick where I can hook my flashlight to it. All right, we're going to try and pull this guy out. Mm. Eh. Hello, friend. I, I don't know if this is one's male or female. It has like a really small horn. Anyway, so here's a Galofa. <laughs> I'm so afraid I'm going to see an eye shot. I'm going to jump. Um, so I don't know. They have, this guy has a little, like two little horns. I think he's just a male that is kind of derpy. I'm going to bring him over to the light. Maybe that's what I'll do. We'll like go get the thing and then I can stand in the light and like talk about it. This might be a good strategy. Thanks for being patient with me, guys. Well, I like, <laughs> I don't know. I need this area. Here's the Galofa. Um, I thought it was Dynasties when I first saw them. Oops. He has, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off. I'm going to pick the beetle back up. Anyway, I thought that they were uh, Dynasties, but as it turns out, they are not. Oof. They are not. He is not as grippy as I expected him to be. Um, so I'm going to put him on the ground. Oh, I'm going to pick him up because he does not stay. And he just, like, walks off my hand. So, here. <laughs> so he's like a Galofa. And I will put him on the ground and I will flip the camera around. So hopefully we can, we can all enjoy his presence. Um, he is quite fast. He is quite fast. All right. All right, here we are. Nyerk. There he is. Anyway, so he has, like, normally they have bigger horns, like, way in the front, a big one. And, uh, but I think this is just a male that didn't get a lot of nutrition as, as a baby, as the larva. So 
One thing that's really interesting is like the horns. Again, this guy is really small. They're usually like way up here. I'm gonna pull out my flashlight again. Um, and when when larva and they don't eat enough, they get these really small horns, and so they can't push other males around as easily. And when they can't do that, then they don't compete as well for females. And when they don't compete as well for females, then they don't get to mate. So, like, these horns are what we call an honest signal, which means that you can see how fit they are in their physical appearance. Here's, like, the show. And the males tend to have these kind of long front legs as well. Dun, dun, dun. They're very awkward. Putter, putter, putter. I like I was like, it's hard to find bugs when there's no moon. And then I literally walk two feet. This is one of the most biodiverse areas in in the world, actually. One of the top five biodiversity hotspots. Go, little buddy, go! <laughs> I'm so afraid I'm going to see an eye shine in, so I'll know I'll jump. <laughs> yeah. Um, so spiders and moths both have eye shine. But... Yeah, there's really not too much else around here that's particularly scary. Oh, another moth is just coming in. Phew. Let's see. I'm gonna keep... Um, once the light is turned off, will they stay there for the rest of the night? Fly off. So when I turn off the light, I actually shake the sheet. It will fly away because if I don't, they will sit here, and then the birds are gonna have a buffet in the morning, and all my beautiful, lovely bugs are gonna die, <laughs> and that'll be sad. Um. It was amazing, and so Kevin says, it was amazing in Southern Arizona when I took entomology, we saw so much diversity. Arizona is, like, literally, like, the tropics of the United States. Like, there's just so much amazing stuff in Arizona, and you get so many different migrations going through Arizona that it's really, like, a, a great spot for, for entomology. Not only insects, but humans from all over. <laughs> let's see Japan and Germany. <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have... Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Um, I guess we're going to walk a little bit through the jungle. The, again, there's a building right down here. So that's where the Wi-Fi is coming from. So we can't, we can't stray too far, but I got hit in the face again by a thing. It just hit me. Um, is there another country? Do you want to go to find insects once the pandemic is over? I really want to do a South American tour in general. There's like, it's so biodiverse here. There's so many different ecosystems. I would love to just like get in a bus and do a South America tour. How do you feel about arthropods that that aren't necessarily inside? I love them all. I just don't know as much about them. Uh, I have a friend, Andrea, who's actually studying Ecuadorian spiders. And yeah, I just don't I just don't know as much about them. But I love them. They're equally as beautiful. I love showing people them, especially like the Opilionis or the Daddy Longlegs. Maybe we'll find one. So cool here because they glow under black light. I live in California and we get some cool guys because we have desert and snow in the same state. Yeah, exactly. And that's how Ecuador is too. We have desert, we have snow, we have tropical rainforest, we have rainforest that's on the we have rainforest that's on the coast, we have rainforest that's in the Amazon. So yeah, we have just like a little bit of everything basically. So it's pretty amazing. Um, this is the building with the Wi-Fi down there. Um this is my job is to keep bugs out of California. Yeah, uh, a lot of invasive species can end up in California just because it has like a warm-ish cl climate. And a lot of fruit and stuff that we would get from like Ecuador would maybe carry bugs. That would also be, uh, that would also maybe end up in California and be a problem. So, all right, so we can't walk super far. Again, we're going to enter the Wi-Fi very soon. But we can go into the jungle a little bit. There's a trail back here. Uh, this is the toucan trail. I have never seen a toucan on it because I'm always face first in the bugs. Anyway, here's a cool spider. Uh, too much light, too much light, but the spider is like right there. I know scorpions fluorescent or UV light. Is it the same case? Yeah, so the Opilionis, the daddy long legs, also fluorescent or UV light. And so do many millipedes, not all millipedes. And right now is a good seed for millipedes, but it rained a whole ton today. So all the millipedes are hiding because it's like the millipedes like when it's humid, but don't necessarily like when it's raining on them. We found two or three big honking millipedes last night and none today. <laughs> that says that's how it works. But yeah. It, okay. So like you guys can just tell how humid it is. Like it's not raining. It's just humid. Like I'm going to breathe and... 
like that's just my breath here just because it's so humid and pandemic i'm the only one in like a hundred meter radius so uh, yeah it's just like so crazy humid which is why there's so many moths right now in the dry season it's not quite as good for insects i mean it's good for some but not if you want like a diversity or a lot of moss. Oh, here's just a spider web. So yeah, we're gonna, I don't know if we're gonna find anything, but we can walk around in the dark. <laughs> As, uh, I guess that's interesting. Uh, ask me more of your questions, I guess. Let me check the comments to make sure. Anything else I want to come in? How are the mosquitoes? Do you have an infrared light? I don't, I don't have an infrared. And how are the mosquitoes? Actually right now they're pretty decent. I think it's just like, so, in the cloud forest, we don't have any tropical diseases. We're just too high up in elevation. There are mosquitoes. They don't like me very much. Uh, the chiggers, on the other hand, freaking love me. But the mosquitoes, for me, aren't that bad. But I know other people who do not have the exact same experience that I do on that front. Are you looking for any species in particular? No, we're just looking to see what's here. Is there? Uh, are there any insects I'm afraid of? I have a very healthy respect for like the four inch tarantula hawks and that's because one got stuck in my hair like by my scalp uh when i had a headlamp on my head and yeah that that wasn't fun at at all <laughs> and was very terrifying it did not sting me though so that's so that was nice um there was a caterpillar hanging out down here earlier so i'm gonna see if the caterpillar is still here but we'll we'll see uh-huh here it is uh-huh oh god um so that's that big fluffy thing right there yep there's the big fluffy caterpillar this is um the flannel moth caterpillar and you can see those kind of like white tufts sticking off of it and we think that those white tufts make it look like it's been parasitized i'm gonna turn the flashlight down a little bit so that way oh that's the wrong way um so we think so we think that those white tufts make it so it looks like it's parasitized so that way other wasps wouldn't try and lay their eggs in it. But this thing will sting the crap out of you. So do not touch this one. It's red. It's, it's black. It's white. It definitely wants, does not want you to touch it whatsoever. That's brighter. Yeah, there we go. Maybe. Yeah, so. Yeah, there we go. That's a better, that's a better shot of it. So you can see it really good. Um, it likes this plant. It's been here for like two weeks now. Just chowing. I have no idea what this plant is, but it's just been chowing down on this plant. So, uh, good for it, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, this guy will really sting you. This is like, I'm not really afraid of a whole ton of insects, but like, I definitely have a healthy respect for the caterpillars and mainly because I'm afraid that I'm going to like slip in the mud and put my hand on a tree and my hand is going to land on one of these guys and it's going to really hurt for a while so that's kind of what i'm afraid of um i'm gonna let's see where uh what could be considered too long to cast a uvite for an arthropod when observing fluorescent i think that it is possible to harm them they definitely don't like it um they definitely uh especially so i've seen katie did actually um like rub their eyes i think just like enough time for you to appreciate it and like move on you're not gonna like permanently damage it but you are gonna make it uncomfortable and it's so weird because like with daddy long legs and with scorpions i've seen that they'll run away like you can shine a regular flashlight on them and they just sit there and like don't really care but you shine the uv light on them and they rub their eyes or they run away to the other side of the leaf so enough to you know i'd say like a good like 30 seconds or so you can get a good look at them get your pictures and then you know turn it off it's not it's not good for your eyes either to be honest um how was learning the species did it take a while to be comfortable with id or did it come quickly <sighs> oh man <clears throat> I'm dyslexic, so learning species names is so hard for me, and it was so difficult for me to learn the family names that I needed to for my taxonomy class. It was really, really hard, um, and that's why I know a lot of common names, or you'll hear me say like, oh, the flannel moss, the megalopleblebleidae, right? It's just because like I can't remember the letters in the right order, which is very frustrating. Um, so for me, it did not come very easily, and it did not come very naturally, and I forget a lot of times and that's really really frustrating um but 
Oh, there's something moving. Um, but, but you know, you just you just practice the common ones. Just kind of roll off the tongue. The more complicated ones, I know enough letters in the right order to at least get a hit on Google. So, yeah, I don't think I don't like I don't think learning necessarily knowing a species is that is like super super important. Um, I guess I'll turn turn the camera around. Not that I have like a light. I can like, yeah. So I don't. Whew. So I don't think like specifically knowing a species is really that super important. Um, for me, it's more important to like know how the animal exists, what it's doing in the ecosystem, why it's doing that thing, what its relationship is with the plants and other animals around it. Um, I think more about how the animal lives and what the animal is and what the animal is doing is far more important than just like what its name is. But a lot of times, especially with family names, if you know a decent amount about the family, that tells you a decent amount about the animal's biology. And that can really help you. I'm so glad you're live streaming this. Oh, that's amazing. Well, maybe I'll, I'll do more of them then. Um, let's see. I'm glad most of my biology teachers were kind of spelling. Yeah, my taxonomy professor basically was like, if you, you get minus half credit for each misspelled word. So you could know all the families and spell them wrong and still fail. So yeah. You have a blue light. Sorry, I can't. Yes, I do have a UV light. Um, however, I haven't found anything that fluoresces. Like I know what fluoresces in this jungle, um, but I haven't found anything that fluoresces yet. Oh yeah. Anyway, we were still walking down the hill. I got I got distracted. <laughs> we'll continue walking down the hill. All right. Yeah. So we'll continue walking down the hill. Um, there's a spot with frogs. Do we have anything else in the sheet? Not yet. I'm also gonna check my phone battery. How are we doing? Ooh, we're getting down to 25%. Got it. Okay. So let's. Let I get the flashlight going again. I need an assistant. <laughs> Help. <laughs> okay. So sometimes we can find frogs. So we're gonna walk down past the building. Do you, prefer, do you prefer Ecuador or the U.S. more? I love Ecuador. I'm never going to leave. They're going to deport me or bury my body here. Like, those of them the options. I love Ecuador. It's definitely not for everyone. Both places, of course, have their, their good and their bad features, right? So, it's like everywhere. Um, let's see. Apparently some very rare butterflies have been seen at the light traps and then, yes, uh, we have a lot of weird night butterflies here, uh, a lot of owl butterflies, um, a couple really interesting moths. I shouldn't have said species, I know invert ID is unlikely and higher taxonomy is usually low quality. Yeah, exactly. Butterflies, you've got a fighting chance with, with me, I know a decent amount of butterflies here, um, but yeah, after that I'm like, no, oh, this is the genus, this is the family, but, but yeah. I mean, a lot of times it's not known. Like, I was doing a night walk tonight, and we found an aquatic roach, which I had seen here before and sent to a friend who, like, has a house in Costa Rica and is, like, really interested in orthopteras, which I know, like, cockroaches aren't orthoptera, but he's also quite interested in the, uh, like, Latodia or the, or the cockroaches. And he's like, I think this is a new species. <laughs> I was like, cool. Well, I'm not going to find two of them, <laughs> and I'm not going to do that study. So, yeah. I miss hiking in the tropics. Aw, v visit me. Good night, lady. Bedtime for this old man. Yeah, no worries. This is hopefully it will just be like saved on YouTube so you can see it. I'm thinking about just like I don't know if you you seem to y'all seem to really like the live stream. So I might do one tomorrow morning before I leave. We shall see. But you know, and during the days, you guys can like see the hummingbirds. Maybe that'll be fun. Let me know if you want a live stream with hummingbirds. I'm kind of useless with hummingbird identification, but uh, I know it's from the common ones, and they're very pretty, and there's a lot of them, so let me know. All right, we're going to walk down the stairs. Uh, yeah, it's like super, super wet tonight. Like, no, no one is having any of this, this wetness. These leaves are big. I'll put my hand next to so this can see it. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Dishes my hand. Dishes the leaf. <laughs> it is. This is an, an anthurium leaf. They make great umbrellas if you don't have one. I'm immunocompromised, so I can't travel that much. Uh, my mom is too, actually. So uh, she has done Ecuador twice. 
Um, but it's, it's really hard for her to travel. And especially now, obviously. What bugs can you catch during the winter? Here, it's our winter right now. Um, lots of bugs during the winter, lots of moths, and it's best time for beetles. Is good, is good winter stuff. It's our winter is the rainy season. Our summer is really good for butterflies. Butterflies love the dry season. Dragonflies love the dry season. Big Katie does like the dry season. What species of beetle is the largest in Ecuador? Um, I think Megasoma Acteon, if you measure biggest by heaviest. Uh, I think there's one Cerambicid. I forget what it's called. I haven't seen it yet. Um, and it's longest, but not heaviest. And it's, it's like long, but not wide. Whereas the, the Megasoma Acteon is like big and hefty and round. So I don't know, however you define large, I guess. One of those two. I want to eventually travel and see tropical insects. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be blown away. You really will. We are, we are coming down to the pond. Oh, here's a spider. You know the spider. Spiders are like in the rain. Oh, those are frogs, Bill. Chirp, chirp. These are all little frogs. What do our frogs sound like here? Right. And the like the rant is one and the cheep cheep are others. Maybe one. I'm gonna try not to fall into the pond because as much see, here's the pond. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the some of the frogs sound like birds here too. It's really cool. Rain. <laughs> Rain. I'm like looking for the yeah, they're super loud, and I've got a selfie stick, so I'm gonna, like, hunker down the... Let me... I'm, like, pretty far away from the Wi-Fi now, so let me know. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, so here's one. Here's a frog. Oof. It's that little yellow thing. I don't know what frog it is. It is small and yellow, though. Chirp, chirp. But, yes, there is a frog. Cool. What is your holy grail insect to see in person? Oof. I've actually seen most of the ones that I've really wanted to see, to be honest. Um, I don't know what my holy grail I'm going to have to think about that one. Connection having some hiccups for the most part. It's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm literally in the rainforest. We're trying real hard. We're trying real hard. It does disconnect every now and then. That's cool frog. Let's see. I'm gonna try. I mean, they're obviously very close. You can hear them. <laughs> I love them. They're all so cute. There was one sitting up here earlier, but it's probably vacated. It has definitely vacated. There's a bromelia back there. Uh, this is a really pretty flower. This is called Mayflower. It apparently used to flower in May, but now it flowers in December. Climate change? Question mark? Unsure. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> I have to point the flashlight where the, where the phone is pointing, obviously. Um, but yeah, for the fairy stuff, we, like, decorate this whole place with, um, candles, and you, like, walk up here, and you pass all the frogs. Is there a frog there? No, that's just dirt. Is there a big difference in terms of species diversity when compared to the eastern and western side of the Andes? Yes, um, it's crazy. So here we have on the western side, we have more in common with Colombia and Costa Rica. And on the eastern side, we have more in common with Peru in the Amazon side. And but the cloud forest on both the western and eastern sides are super, super. Oh, there's a dragonfly nymph coming out. Um, but it's all the way out there. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I got distracted. All oh, right. So the eastern and western side of the Andes, this is like the biodiversity hotspot, guys. Like the, the, the eastern and the western sides are so, so, so diverse with these like pockets, basically. Like there's butterfly species that you can find here in Mindo. The, and if you go up the hill, like the hill, the mountain, 20, 30 minutes, that butterfly species isn't there anymore. And you find these little pockets of 
of everything insects it's like the hummingbirds i can show you hummingbirds tomorrow and it's like those hummingbirds you can only find in this cloud forest on this side of the mountain and that's it and to me that's so crazy it's like all of these different uh all of these different elevational points all these little tiny micro habitats you are basically just biological islands we get so many different species on both sides that are so different from each other at elevation and on either side. So absolutely amazing. Um, from and, and just like what you see here in the Western Cloud Forest, and if you go to the Eastern Cloud Forest, you're like, wow, this, these are like completely different things. I hear frogs. Yes, you do. What's the predominant fragrance right now? Wet and cold and fungusy. <laughs> My sniffer doesn't work very well. Uh, it just, you know, when you go out, like, Bill, I know that you're in Minnesota, you know, like, when it's fall, and it's, like, the morning and fall, and it's cold, but not, like, super cold, it's, like, sweater cold, and it's, like, that crisp, like, it's, like, crisp, but wet at the same time, humid, it smells like that. It smells like wet fall leaves, <laughs> I guess. That's how I would describe it. Um, are there poisonous star frogs to look out for? At this elevation, no, actually. Um, and there's only a couple on the coast that you're you're looking at the Amazon if you want to find poison dart frogs. We do have glass frogs, and I saw one tonight when we were walking by the river. We have glass frogs, and they're transparent. They're not poisonous, though. I mean, I wouldn't eat one. I wouldn't lick it. But <laughs> they're not they're not like poison dart frogs, but they're transparent. Their bellies are transparent. I love that. Thanks. Uh, you ever run into other researchers? Yes, I do. And it's always so amazing to talk to them. And I love, I'm not good at doing research myself. Like I really consider myself a teacher and an educator and a science communicator. I, I don't do research, like I'm just not good at it, but I really respect people who are and I love hearing about their projects. Cause to me, like, I love the stories that come out of research, but I understand like I'm not that good at doing the work behind figuring out those stories. I like sharing those stories, but I don't like doing the work to figure them out. Great description, excellent. I just remember that you were the one on Twitter that told me to get the Frogs of Mindo poster. It sprinted two by three feet and framed a mirror. Oh, amazing. That's great. I love it when you guys tell me things like that because I feel so much like with the internet, I'm like, do a thing. I like the thing, the thing is good. And I don't know if you did it. I don't know if it resonated with you. I don't know if you liked it, you know? It's just like really cool hearing you guys say those things. It makes me feel like I've made a small difference in the world. So thank you. <laughs> actually, the guy who I did a night walk tonight, I was, we actually didn't um, have any fairy or night walk bookings tonight, which is why I was like, I'm gonna do this thing at 1030. And then apparently everyone wanted to think, ooh, here's a spider. Hello. So yeah, there's not much out walking around tonight. Very pretty. You can see the silk strand off his butt. Um, anyway, but yeah, he was like, I follow you on Twitter. And I was like, that is crazy, sir. Well, I hope I live up to your expectations. <laughs> and we had a great time. We actually saw two snakes tonight. Crazy. You're lucky if you see one snake. We saw two. Not that I know what either of them are. I'm going to send them to my herpetologist friend and they will teach me what they are. And yeah. All right. Well... It's been an hour. Oh my goodness. How's that happened? All right, so I'm gonna, we're going to take one one more look at the sheet. I think I think this is our maximum capacity for tonight. My phone battery is dying. That's a beetle. I'm not sure if you hear the brrr. Uh, dope. It's a big it's a big fat scare beetle. Not that it'll sit. There he goes. Bye. Not that it'll sit still long enough. That's the one that hit me in the head earlier. Um, yeah, so I've been on this for or well, for an hour now, only a little bit. Um, seeing the floaty spider silk, so how much air movement? I mean, it's not like breezy or anything, but you can definitely. Um, actually, I might be. I might be a little. Huh. So that you can just see how much humidity there is. Like, this is my flashlight side. My lens isn't dirty. This is just the humidity. Um, and you, it like you can see a little bit of movement. I don't know if you guys can see. I mean, I can see a little bit of movement. Uh, about that much. I don't 
really know how air currents work, I guess. It's it's not windy, but there is obviously movement. Um, I really enjoyed the live stream. Amazing. Uh, thank you. What's your favorite insect? Oh, man, I have so many. Yes, the, all of them. I really like orchid mantises. I really want to see one someday. I guess this would be my holy grail. They don't live here, but I'd love to see an orchid mantis in the wild someday, and I'd really love to see an atlas moth in the wild someday. I guess I can, like, come and talk to you guys, like, with my face for a while. Hello. All right. Ooh, can we see a close-up of... Oh, yeah, sure. Um, yes, I'd be happy to give you a close-up of the hawk moth. Let's see. And yuck. Here's the close-up of the hawk moth. Very pretty. Very shiny. Let's see if we... I mean, get even closer. It's like a greenish color. It's not like picking up that well between the mercury vapor light and the phone camera and the flashlight I'm pointing out. But it's like kind of this greenish yellowy color. And I'm not sure. It has these like yellow and black wings underneath. It obviously doesn't like this very much. Uh, if you couldn't tell. Not a fan. This is so cool. I'm glad I got to see this. Amazing. Um, I mean, if you guys like it, I mean, I can, I can do more of them. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if this is a thing that people will like. I guess I'll just try it. But yeah. So thank you so much for letting me know that you liked it. Because then I can keep doing more things that you guys like. And yeah. Oh my god, it's so tame. Yeah. <laughs> like all the moths. Like, well, this guy too. Like, you can just like pet it. Meh. Yep. That's what's great about moths. This, this again, this guy. See, that's the that's the flannel moth guy. Hi, hawk moth. Hello, hello, hawk moth. Hello. I'm from Ecuador. I'm glad to see the biodiversity in my home country. Oh, that's amazing. What part of Ecuador are you from? Uh, here's another little tiger moth. So cute. Uh, this guy is like a little camouflaged, bloody. Yes, this is amazing. Hi, Hawk Moth. Aren't you worried about getting the scales coming off? Uh, so if you touch the body, he has, like, hairs. And if you're really gentle, you don't really brush them off. You can still feel that it's fuzzy, but you don't brush them off. So, nope. See? Totally fine. Oh, I don't live in Ecuador. It's my home country. Amazing video. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I'm... Thank you for letting a gringa in your home. <laughs> this is another tiger moth. Uh, it's also really pretty. It's kind of like yellow with the blue stripes. Um, I think they're the map moths or something very similar to that. But this guy is really pretty. And uh, this guy, I'm, I'm gonna try the thing. If they're sleepy, they fall like leaves. If they're not sleepy, they fly away. But yeah, do you guys see he just fit like a leaf and then flew away i don't know maybe this guy will do it yeah see it <laughs> and that's a cool way that they do camouflage no wasp moths yes there are some there's some wasps too there's like here here's an ichneumon that's an actual wasp but there were yes here we go uh, yep here we this is an arctid although they, they changed the family now it's like an air a day or something now why taxonomy was changing um but yeah here's a tiger moth a uh, wasp mimicking tiger moth. And here's just a shiny, pretty one. As well. Goodbye, friend. Um, um, so many cool moths. We got a neat pink tiger moth. A few spots in the Utah desert. Amazing. There's a lot of really cool diversity in the Utah desert. Um, my friend lives in Utah, and she's like, my parents collect moths, so... The wasp, the wasp moth, the yellow is my favorite. And I'm like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, and this guy's really small too. So like, a lot of people don't care about them because they're like, oh, it's not like <laughs> this giant one over here. It's like this little guy. I really like these ones. These are called emeralds. These are a geometrid moth. If you guys want, I can just like do close-ups of these little guys. I wasn't sure if my video quality was good enough to do it, but yeah. So this guy is really pretty. These are emeralds. These are geometrid moths. Not a whole lot is known about them and not a whole lot is written about how to tell species apart from each other. So there's this really tiny plant hopper, which is beautiful, but um, my camera is not, I mean, it's millimeters long, so it's not quite good enough to get a good detail on that guy. Um, oh, this moth is really pretty. Another tiger moth. There's so many tiger moths. Um, but yeah, this guy is really pretty. Moth flies into face. That guy's really nice and pretty. 
I don't know a whole lot about all of these. There's too many. And a lot of them, their biology just hasn't been described. Um, there's this guy. This guy might be a Lassio Campid, but like the spots on him are just really cool. Doing great in the close-ups. Okay, sweet. Well, I'll, I'll do a few more close-ups until my phone battery dies. Yeah, there's this guy. I wonder always why moths are so meh while butterflies scoot the slightest movement. Um, I think it's just because when they hit the light, they're, they like sleep <laughs> and they're cold. Can you take a still photo of the sheet and post it later? Yeah, sure. I can do that. I would be happy to. Um, here's that ichneumonid wasp again. Um, we had a male... I guess they went to sleep already. We had a male of this weird group called the Pelicinidae. Oh, yeah, here we go. So the Pelicinidae, the females look like this, except they have a really long tail that curves like that. And you see them during the day, and they lay their eggs in leaf litter and look for beetle larvae. There he is. <laughs> um, and look for beetle larvae. Um, in the States, they're considered to be parthenogenic, so the females are just repro reproducing clones of themselves. So I think in the tropics is the only place where you can find the males. So that's, I don't know, I think that's cool. So, but yeah. This is an another parasitic wasp of some sort. I'm not sure which one. YouTube live is way higher quality than me. Yes. Yeah, so that's why I kind of actually stopped doing Periscope. It was super frustrating. It kept, like, hiccuping with my phone. <sighs> I just swallowed or something. That was delicious. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it just was, like, really frustrating all around. And I've been trying to figure out a platform for live videos that I like that I think work well. And so, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Right. Oh, this guy's pretty. Oh, butter, 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 butter. <laughs> Um, who is the friend with the long, straight tail? Oh, that, oof. Um, I don't know where that friend is. <laughs> well, e sure. Um, there was another parasitic wasp that had a long, straight tail, but I don't know where this one is that you were talking about. If I find one, I will, I will, I will try and highlight it again. I'm sorry I missed it. Um, here's, like, a nice camouflage moth as well. You can see how, like, bark-like it looks under the light. Looks like bark. Uh, here's that Batman moth again. I love the Batman moth. Oh, here's another tiger moth. Can you see the stripes? Oh, it might have been a shadow. Yeah, it might have been. Okay, so this is really cool. I know this tiny little moth doesn't really look like a whole lot, um, but it's mimicking a whole group of beetles. There's beetles here called the netwing beetles, and they look basically just like this, but are super toxic. And these moths mimic them. I'm not sure if the moths are also toxic, and it's a form of mullerian mimicry, or the moths are not to toxic and just reap all the benefits. But as you can tell, it is also their season, as there's like literally four of them. So, anyway, oh, this guy, oh, I love these guys. Um, they have, like, two gold eye spots. These are a form of geometries. And you see that I can't point and hold the phone and hold the flashlight. But you see, like, up here in the corner, that right, right there, whoops, um, that's where a bird got it and it escaped with its life. Moths can actually fly with about 30% of their wings damaged. And here's another uh, tiger moth that looks like a wasp so i know someone asked about them earlier so these two are very pretty as well some of my favorites here there's this guy which is super um uh which is super would be super camouflaged if he wasn't just you know sitting like right here how do they figure out how to mimic it's, yeah, it's just random evolutionary processes uh just happens over enough time enough random chances and I, enough dice are rolled like moths have like I think a hunt <laughs> look at this moth is literally hanging from the tail of the, the hind wing of the Rochelia that's hilarious come on friend what are you doing what are you doing buddy um yeah it's just like enough random chance 
Moths, I think, have like 180 million years of evolution. Dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. I mean, it's just a lot of time. It's just a lot of damn time. And it's a lot of luck. And you just happen to kind of look orangey, and that beetle kind of looks orangey, and a bird ate that beetle and got sick, and now avoids everything that's orange, and just keeps escalating from there. It's a phenomenon called the uh, evolutionary arms race, or the Red Queen effect. Uh, she's so pretty, so orange. Uh, I think it's actually male. You can see those giant honking antennae on it. I have so many cool images of moths of windows in Costa Rica mountains. I imagine the Indies are the next. Yeah, yeah, they're the next step. Um, <laughs> not getting eaten is a great filter. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Oh, this guy's really cool. He's all camouflagey as well. Yeah, look at that little, yeah, like little, looks like a little moldy stick. And this guy looks like a little moldy, I don't know, bark thing, <laughs> I guess. I mean, it's just to see these animals, like, because you would never see these, right? You would never see these just, like, on the, like, walking through the forest. They just look too leaf-like. They just blend in so well. Like, look at this guy right like he didn't he doesn't even look like a moth and so it's so cool when you put up the light and you can just like you know see all these guys yeah all right well um i can't wait to see how many more get discovered yeah so like all that all that diversity like this little thing right here like that's a moth i'm sure no one knows what that little tiny tiny thing is um, these are like little tiny caddis flies. Here's a little tiny lightning bug or lightning beetle or spark beetle, I like to call them. Um, but like so much diversity. Oh, here's a cool plant hopper or a leaf hopper. It's a little psychedelic. Um, but yeah, there's so much hidden diversity in these little things. This is another, this is a psychedelic or a sharpshooter, not a moth. Um, oh, are, were you looking at this guy with the long tail? This is a female ichneumonid. And that long tail is her stinger. She will uh, lay her eggs into uh, some unsuspecting insect and her larva will eat it from the inside out. Um, yeah, so all these, like that little tiny moth, like who knows if someone knows what that is, you know, like all these little tiny things is where all the diversity is, but no one wants to sit here and like look at tiny moths because they are not particularly romantic. Oh, here's another cicadella. I love cicadellas, they're so cute. So cute. Such bright colors. There's like this, this little camouflaged thing. So pretty. So yeah, that's where a lot of the diversity is, just in those little tiny, what we call micro moths. And who knows? Oh, here's a really pretty moth. Oh, this is why we're on a selfie stick, guys. We can just like stick, just stick up and I can, this guy's really pretty. There's another tiger moth, I believe. You can see, he's just so pretty with the colors. We're gonna, ooh, we can get really close in on them. Nice noise and this is oh there's a, this is another little camouflage guy a little, little better spot a little better light you can see him really well there's some really awesome micro moths especially the ones with the split oh yes uh, there's actually a one with a split feathery wing sitting on my phone i'm like i keep waiting for him to go under the sheet so i can show him to you but uh, nope, just wants to sit on my phone. Oh, wait, he landed. Hello, <laughs> dun dun dun. No, come back. There we go, plume moths. Like this guy, ask and you shall receive. There you go, a little plume moth right here for you. You're, you know, every day, every day asking. Um, yeah, so with that, I guess I will leave you guys um so it's been a pleasure i really liked doing this it seems that you guys really like this as well so i guess i'm gonna try and do this more in the future very much safe safe drive home thanks i'm thinking i'm taking the bus tomorrow um all those delicious bat snacks yeah right i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> have, shake it off shake the sheet off so that way um my bugs don't get eaten all right goodbye this is really fun amazing why do you like it Please, please, so 
This was this was amazing. Um, great. I'm glad you guys liked this so much. Thanks. This was so cool. Good night, fellow insect people. Thank you. Thanks, Frank Fan. Thank you so much. I'm going to do more of these, I guess. You guys seem to really like them. So, so yeah, keep make sure you're subscribed. Obviously, I'm gonna do a thing, you know, like, subscribe, do all the things. Although I'm assuming that you are liked and subscribed because I don't know why you'd be here otherwise. Oh wait, hold on, there's a cool moth. I'm gonna show you one more cool moth and then and then I'll go. Ah, turn around, camera. There we go. A really pretty little white moth. So white, it can't even expose properly. Can I shade it a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Very pretty. Really pretty. You see how little micro details on them? Oh, there's a big beetle in here. <laughs> Hello, big beetle. <laughs> Hello, friends. Out. Oh. <laughs> here. Yes, you just. Yo, wow, look at those antennae. We're just here earlier talking about beetles with cool antennae. There's a good one. These are called lamellate clubs. And he flew away. All right. I'm literally being hit by beetles on all sides. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to shake off the sheet. I'm going to set it. I'm going to like put it down. And uh, yeah, I will see you all very soon. I have a video coming out tomorrow and another video coming out Monday. And we're going to keep checking through almost daily-ish December. So I will see you all very soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye! I can't hold all the things I want. Bye-bye!